By the end of this video, you'll know how to use the trim command in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. The trim command can be activated from the sketch dropdown list or from the right click sketch menu. You'll also be able to activate the trim command with the keyboard shortcut letter T as in Tango, as the trim command is used quite often while working in the sketch environment. The trim command lets you trim away sketch geometry to the nearest point of intersecting sketch geometry. For this demo, I've gone ahead and set up some sketch geometry, which I'll use to showcase how the trim tool functions. If you would like to follow along, I've put a link to the demo file in the video description. In this first example, you'll see that I have two circles that overlap. If I click and select each section, you'll see that each section turns blue, where I have a closed profile shape. So technically, there are three different closed profiles here that I could use to extrude or use any of the other modeling commands. However, all that I want is this main profile or the largest one that I currently have selected. With the trim tool active, you'll see that as I hover over the sketch geometry, it will highlight in red the parts that will be trimmed or cut away. Again, you'll notice that the part in red shows that it will trim the sketch geometry up until the point at which it intersects other sketch geometry. If the red preview looks correct, then all you have to do is click once on the geometry and it will be trimmed away. I'll click once on the top of the smaller circle. After trimming some sketch geometry, the trim tool remains active, so you can continue to trim away other parts of the sketch. Before I trim this other line away, I want you to take notice of the sketch constraints that are present. I'm going to hit the escape key on my keyboard so I can exit the trim tool in order to click on the outer circle. You'll notice that there are a few coincident constraints and if I click on the smaller circle, it also has some coincident constraints, all of which were automatically applied when I created the sketch geometry. I'll right click and select repeat trim from the marking menu and this time, I'll click on the top of the larger circle to trim it away. If you look in the lower right-hand corner, you'll notice that there's a warning that some of the constraints and or dimensions may have been removed. Now, the reason I pointed out those coincident constraints before using the trim tool was to make you aware of this fact that anytime you use the trim tool, you'll have to be cautious of what it does to your constraints and dimensions. If this warning message ever comes up, you can always hit the undo button to take notice of the applied constraints or dimensions that you have, and then you can hit the forward or redo button to reapply the trim tool. For the second demo, you'll see that I have some sketch geometry that has a number of different lines on the inside. Now a simple trick with the trim tool that is often overlooked is the fact that you can drag through multiple lines to quickly trim away sketch geometry. For example, if I just wanted the outer perimeter of these three shapes, then with the trim tool active, I'll simply click and while holding down the left mouse button, I can drag through all of these different lines that I want to trim away. And I'm doing this a little bit slow on purpose so you can see what I'm doing but be aware that you can actually drag through sketch geometry pretty fast. For this third demo, you'll notice I have a spline that runs through some other sketch geometry. Now, one common misconception is that the trim tool will trim away the line up until the next spline point. Unfortunately, that is not the case. You'll notice as I hover over the spline that it works like all other sketch geometry, where it trims the line at the next intersection of sketch geometry. The last demo geometry that I've set up was created with a number of different pieces of sketch geometry. 
Now, technically, there's nothing wrong with leaving the sketch geometry how it is, but oftentimes you'll find it's best to trim away unnecessary geometry, which makes it easier to use the modeling commands, such as the extrude or loft commands. With the trim tool active, I'll click and drag over all the inner geometry that I don't want. I'll click and drag over each corner, releasing my mouse button as I move to the next corner, ensuring that I don't accidentally trim away any of the sketch geometry that I want to keep. Lastly, I'll trim away the sketch geometry of this inner part. In summary, the trim tool is used to clean up and refine geometry without having to recreate entire sections. Trimming your sketch geometry is not required to create three-dimensional features. However, trimming away the extra sketch geometry will make your sketches more robust and clearly defined. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.